Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to cover some of the wiring diagrams that I use in my repair procedures and how they've changed recently and how that's a big improvement. I'm also going to compare the difference between the ProDemand, Identifix, and all data wiring diagrams. So let's jump right in here. I already have the same vehicle selected across all three platforms. Um, we're going to start with uh, ProDemand. That's the one I've used the longest, and that's the one that I noticed the uh, notification on about the change in the wiring diagrams. Um, Identifix or uh, all data just gave me the notification a couple of days ago, even though their diagrams changed uh, a few weeks ago as well. So I have a 2010 Toyota Tacoma pulled up on the screen here. We're going to go to the engine performance wiring diagram. Um, when I click on that one diagram, it gives us all the information. It's kind of hard to read, so you typically have to zoom in. Um, some of these are more mobile friendly than others. Sometimes if you zoom in on a certain item, it's hard to scroll around. You have to zoom out and then zoom back in on a different item. If you are on a mobile platform, a tablet, a phone, or so on. But using a computer and a mouse or even a touchscreen computer, you can do quite a bit of navigation that way. Um, so Mitchell uses the Adobe SVG viewer as far as I'm aware. Um, that's what they used to use. Um, they may be using something different now, but that's what makes this wiring diagram interactive. So I can highlight wires and especially when it's really complicated and there's multiple wires that are the same color, you can highlight one, you can move around and find out where they go. But in the recent change to the wiring diagram, let me zoom out here. Um, they added a really cool feature where let me select this wiring diagram or this wire and it's an orange wire I'll zoom in so you guys can see from the circuit opening relay and it goes off off the edge of the screen here and typically you would have to go number one here go to the next diagram and pick it up where it left off but now they're making it to where that wire if you highlight it it highlights that wire through the whole trace and it's very very helpful um, especially if you go through five or six pages, this engine performance diagram has seven pages. So being able to highlight that, you can kind of follow it through. If for some reason the wire does change or break, you can pick up where it left off um, fairly easily. But one thing that Mitchell is doing that all data is not doing, as far as I'm aware, is this box right here says the engine room fuse block or relay block. If I click on that, it highlights all of the wires going to that block, um, which you know is a little daunting, but there's a lot of stuff there. Let me unselect that. Let me try clicking on one relay. Okay, so that's still selecting everything. But if I wanna look at one component, say the fuel pump, if I click that, it'll highlight all the wires for that fuel pump. Um, it does highlight some of the power feed wires where they go elsewhere, but it makes it so much easier to, to track stuff down. Say we jump over here to the ignition system and I want to find everything that that is connected to. It shows me the power feed, which goes to all the coils, the ground feed that goes to all coils. And then IGF is probably connected. No, they're all separate. And then we have IGT. So let me zoom out. Okay, IGF is uh, connected all together there, but it didn't highlight all of them. So then we can just jump through the diagrams here and trace that all the way back to the ECM. So that really saves quite a bit of time in tracking down wires. Now, let me jump over to all data because they're using the same manufacturer for these diagrams. And I believe they told me it was Bosch who makes their wiring diagrams or one of the companies that Bosch has bought out. Um, if we go to all data, click on this diagram, and this is a recent addition. They just made this to where all of the diagrams for that system will, oops, highlighting stuff here, will line up on the screen and you can see it all in one place. So this is very similar to if you printed out all these diagrams and then taped them together and you could follow the, the path of the wires. And that's what we used to do when stuff got complicated. 
um, especially on the black and white diagrams, or if you're printing with a you know black and white printer at your at your shop, you just print them all out, you tape them together, you trace the wires out, um, use a highlighter to highlight certain wires. Um, but this is kind of cool. The same thing if I click on a single wire, which uh, there we go, single wire it highlights it throughout the wiring diagram. It's a little more sensitive on ha picking the wire, but um, one thing that the all data does not have, and I don't know if this is a licensing agreement that certain companies could have certain features and the other ones couldn't, or if it's just something Mitchell did to to make it work. If I click on this this relay block, um, it does not highlight all of the wires. And I've noticed at times if there's a break in the wire or a splice pack, the all data version doesn't select all of the wires continuing past that point. We'll go ahead and give that a try right here. Highlight that ground. Yeah, see that, that little splice pack right there um, breaks the wire. So I'd still have to, it's kind of a pain. I'd have to go through here and select them all. But if it's a wire that you know spans multiple pages of information, um, it is still beneficial to select it this way. If you don't want to view all of them at once, you can, uh, let me revert everything back. You can click this button, view as a single page. It goes back to the old way. You can zoom in, you can pick a wire. When you are on this page and then you hit the next box, it doesn't continue it um, along like the Mitchell one did. So I think that there's certain features that each company would benefit from adding that the other company has done. But like I said, there might be a license agreement with Bosch that only certain companies could have certain features. Now, if we jump over here to identify, oh, one more thing on the all data before we jump over. If I'm on this diagram, um, I can easily jump into the factory diagram over here on the right side of the screen. I'm on the interactive color. If we want to go to the OE, I just click it there. It has nine pages if we want to find a certain item we just click on the index it'll give us an overview um, stuff that's highlighted i can click on so part seven click on that it'll take us to page seven of that diagram and have the repair information with the oe um, drawn diagram here now what else is cool about this on the oe stuff is down below it gives you all the connector views and pinouts so if we zoom in here um, all of these Knock sensors go through connector EE1. And if we want to get a pin out of that, we can very easily by just going through here. I guess I could have hit the next button, but we just have to find EE1. Now, um, sometimes you have to go through several pages to find them because it lists all of the connectors for that engine. And there is a lot of them. So we need to go find double letters, I believe. So EE1 right here six pin connector let's zoom in on that guy um, we have our pin out we have the male and female side so it's very easy to identify um, the pins for that specific deal now this is a toyota deal not all the other manufacturers make it so easy but i really like uh i used to use the factory toyota information when i do engine conversions um, if i was upgrading to a newer engine i could print out the engine room diagram it gave me the bulkhead pinouts like this. So whenever I was deep pinning stuff and adding new circuits in, um, it made it so simple, but not all the manufacturers do that. So it may change a little bit depending on what vehicle you're looking up. Let's jump over to Identifix and we will go to the service manual. You can do it by search, but we'll go service manual, electronic wiring diagrams, system circuits, Jump down here to engine control. We were on the one GR, which is the four liter. And this is the same diagram. Um, if you want the diagram that's not the OE one, we have to go back to the home page. Um, it's a little more difficult. We'll just say, we'll punch an ignition coil. Cause I don't know if you could punch an engine control and get that entire engine diagram, but we'll go down here to the bottom um, and we'll scroll up a little bit. We have the motor diagram, fuel controls, diagrams one through nine. So 
that should give us everything we need. Sometimes you have to look up specific stuff. And then, like this is the OE diagram, but it's in black and white. Um, so I don't find that very beneficial to me. If we jump up here to color wire diagrams, it should be the same diagram we had before. But you see it only lists diagram number four. It doesn't list all nine of them. Um, or seven of them, depending on which version this is. Yeah, this is the one where we had seven diagrams. And the highlighting thing, we can't select the next one in the list, so that's not going to work. Um, so I don't, I don't typically jump to Identifix for wire di wiring diagrams, unless I want the OE one. But now that I have all data, I normally just look it all up in all data. Um, I do hope that all data adds the feature, the highlighting feature that Mitchell has, because that's a very good feature to have. Now, I haven't used the wiring diagrams from Moto Logic or any of the other companies. I don't know if they're different, if they're the same. Um, if I do demo those softwares and get wiring diagram access, then I might do a follow-up video, including some of that stuff. And if the wiring diagrams on the companies I use changes over the years, then I will post an update video for that as well. Um, I posted a whole video on the different repair systems that I use which included some information about the DIY access. I'll cover that again here um, because a lot of my subscribers are DIY people. So if you're looking for access to repair information and you don't wanna pay the 150 to $200 a month that I pay per subscription, you can access a DIY subscription. So Mitchell and All Data both have it. Identifix does not. The Mitchell subscription is 20 bucks for, for one month or 30 bucks for a year, but I noticed on their website, they have limitations. So they do not show you body and collision repair, headlight, taillight replacements, windows and regulators, door panels, locks and latches, mirrors, glass, wipers, filters, spark plugs and wires, radiators, thermostats, and non-standard parts. So that's quite a bit of repair information that is missing from the Mitchell DIY. Some of my most popular videos include thermostats and spark plug replacements. So if you can't include that in the repair information, you know, that, that seems like a pretty big crippling factor. Um, if you go to all data, I didn't see any limitations on their page. I sent them an email to find out if there are any. Um, it may take a day or two because it's on the weekend to get a response back on that. Um, but they, since they don't list it on their page, I maybe they don't have any limitations. Maybe once you subscribe to that one vehicle, you get all the information. Their pricing is a little different. The first vehicle for a one-year subscription is at $29.95, but additional vehicles are $20. So your primary vehicle that you drive and work on all the time, pay the $30. If you're working on other people's vehicles in the driveway, add an extra 20 bucks into the repair cost. Um, you're gonna get all the repair information. If you service their vehicles for a length of time, you'll have it for at least a year. But that's gonna be cheaper than paying for the whole uh, whole subscription of 180 to $200 a month for the all data subscription. If you keep your vehicles for a long time, they have a five year subscription. The first vehicle is $50. That's only $10 a year for all the repair information. That's very cheap. So they do have a little more uh, flexibility on their subscription plans. And I think that they're, they're going to have a little more information available. I believe that all data goes up to 2014 on the DIY subscriptions. I'm not sure what the Mitchell does. If you're looking for the Identifix version, they don't have one yet. And I don't know if they will because a lot of the information is information from their users and it's not information from the actual company. So there may be some privacy conflicts there. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, if you guys use something other than what I'm using, put a, a comment down below. Tell me what you're using, what you like about it. And I will try to demo it and see if it's something that I need to add to my arsenal of repair information. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and click the bell if you want to see future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.